On behalf of Executive Secretary Magazine's weekly admin chat, welcome to Overcome Overwhelm with Systems and Procedures. My name is Julie Perrine. I'm the founder and CEO of All Things Admin, and I'm delighted to join you for this week's admin chat. Have you ever felt overwhelmed with everything you have to do? Do you ever worry that things are falling through the cracks or not getting done? Have you ever struggled to find what you need when you need it? If you happen to answer yes to any of these questions, then creating better systems and documenting your procedures to support you and your team will significantly help. Systems and procedures help you get and stay organized. An organization helps you significantly overcome overwhelm. We all know what overwhelm feels like, and it happens at various times for all of us, whether we're naturally inclined to being organized or not. It's that feeling of being buried by work and drowning in our never-ending to-do list. It's also that feeling of being so inundated by our work that we find our productivity and the enthusiasm for our work grinding to a halt. And it really has a strong emotional overpowering impact on our entire mindset and outlook on our work, which is a problem. Disorganization and clutter also have a significant negative impact on our feelings of overwhelm. Have you ever looked at your desk or looked around your workspace and just felt overwhelmed or depressed? Do you have any idea how much time you've wasted during a day searching for emails or files or important information that you need? It's okay to raise your hand here. I've been there myself many times. And depending on what's going on in my environment at any given time, I still struggle with this myself from time to time. But what has changed for me dramatically over the past 15 years is the speed at which I can hit reset and recover from those bouts of disorganization. And I attribute that change to putting the principles of organization to work in my life on a daily basis and establishing the habit of documenting my systems and procedures. The other thing I've learned is that in order to get better at recovering from bouts of disorganization or overcoming chronic disorganization, is we have to figure out what's derailing us in the first place. And in my experience, there are four ways that organizing goes wrong. The first one is probably the biggest offender, and that is perfectionism. We think our procedures have to be perfectly complete and beautifully formatted, so we put them off. We think our file folder labels have to be perfectly typed, so our to file pile becomes this mountain of paper, and instead of just handwriting them and getting them done, we keep putting it off. So perfection then leads to procrastination. And it's like this vicious and deadly cycle when it comes to getting organized. A handwritten procedure is still a documented procedure that allows someone to get a task done, including you. And those file folder tabs don't need to be perfectly printed labels. You don't have to wait until you have time to create a beautiful label. That only adds to clutter and disorganization on our desks when a handwritten file folder tab can still identify and organize the information so that you or anyone you work with can find it. And really, that's the point of organizing in the first place. When there's a massive stack of paper on your desk, it's not organized, useful, or easy to locate for anyone. And you can always come back and create those nicely formatted labels later. But for right now, simply getting the papers gathered, contained, labeled, and placed in their rightful home helps remove some of that overwhelm from your space. And not to mention, when you're struggling to stay focused on your work and keep track of where you are in the process of getting something done, when constant interruptions are derailing you all day long, having a handwritten procedure can help you quickly get back on track because you can mark where you're at when that interruption happened and quickly get back into the process where you left off. We also function under this myth that neat equals organized. That's not so. There are a lot of people who maintain a neat or clean surface, but their files are a mess, their drawers are crammed and piled full of stuff, their email inbox is a disaster, and they can't find what they need when they need it either. So neat can be a deceptive mental trick that we play on ourselves. And the other comment I hear a lot is, I don't have enough time to stay organized. But if you could truthfully track and measure what disorganization is costing you in time and money, you would quickly realize that the habit of organization creates time for you. It also reduces the feelings of overwhelm. And you're more productive and efficient in everything you do when you're organized, which helps reduce the stress and tension in your life as well. 
When I think of organization, I love the quote by Benjamin Franklin, a place for everything, everything in its place. And when I define organization, I define it as the systems we use to find, do, and complete things. It's really that simple. The good news is that the basic principles of organization are the same no matter what you're trying to do, whether it's organizing your executive files at the office or a stack of recipe cards at home. Yet organizational principles still need to be tailored to fit the situation. So cleaning your desk off is going to require a slightly different approach than organizing your email inbox, even though the basic steps are going to be the same. And as I've worked with and learned a lot from professional organizers throughout the years, this four-step organization process that I'm going to show you is one of the most valuable that I have come across. It's simple and it's applicable to just about every situation. And it goes like this. Step one, you gather similar items together. Step two, you contain the items. Step three, you label the items. And step four, you create a home for the items. So these four basic principles are a system that you can apply to organizing every aspect of your work. And we'll start by applying it to your workspace, just so you can kind of see how this works. So when you think about organizing your desk or your prime workspace area, we'll, we'll attack that first since that is one of the major spaces of overwhelm that is typically impacting us whether we realize it or not. So step one, we gather similar items together. So that means sorting things into their respective piles of office supplies, files, piles of paper, business cards, maybe incoming mail or personal items, and segregating them by similar item type. And then step two, we're going to contain the items. So that may mean finding some file folders, maybe some zipper bags, binders, boxes, something to put these things in so that we can create a permanent home for them. Some of the items may simply need to be put away if they already have a home in a cupboard or a drawer. Step three then is to label the containers so that you and those around you know what goes in it. So label those files label your drawers, label your binders. Make sure that you label everything because this is really important. Just because you put it in a file folder doesn't mean that it's going to be helpful to anyone if they don't know what's in the file folder itself or they don't know what's stored in that drawer or that particular cupboard that you're storing things in. And then step four is to create a home for the items. And this means finding a permanent location where this thing lives, whether it's in a file folder on your desk or in a file drawer next to where you sit or in a storage area, maybe behind your desk space. Maybe it's a cabinet in a storage closet somewhere. But identifying the permanent home for the items that you have gathered, contained, and labeled so that it can be organized and found again when it's needed. A quick tip here is to keep your trash bin and your shred bins close by for quick access because a lot of what we've saved doesn't need to still be sorted or organized after it's been around for a while. So see how quickly when you apply these four steps, you can start to do a triage of your workspace as a starting point. So let's apply this to paper. That's another great example. And so as you apply these four principles, you'll start to see that this is the start of mapping out your system, and in this case, our system for paper management or for filing our paper items. So step one is gathering all of your papers together, sorting them into stacks, maybe by category or topic. So you may have invoices or project stuff, event planning, travel planning, contracts. You're going to start to see some similarities or general buckets that your paper on your desk falls into. Put some little sticky notes next to each of those as you identify them and sort your paper into piles that go together. Step two then is to contain the items. So again, using file folders, maybe you need to staple some things together, use binder clips, paper clips, whatever it takes to keep like items contained and together. And then step three, label the items, whether that's file labels or handwritten labels to get you by, or sticky notes for temporary sorting like we've just talked about. And then finally, step four, create a home for the items. So again, a permanent file folder, maybe that goes on a sorter on your desktop, or maybe it goes into a file drawer itself, or maybe it gets put into an envelope and sent to somebody else. 
There's lots of things and lots of ways you can apply this. But what we're really talking about with the four principles is the tools that we use to apply them becomes a system for getting and staying organized. And these four steps can be applied to organizing anything. Once you have a system then, it can be documented and shared with others. So that's why when I talk about systems, I talk about them being at the heart of your success as a professional. Not only do they help you find, do, and complete things consistently, but they save you time, effort, and stress. Systems make behaviors automatic, so you don't have to think about them as much or try to remember all of those details anyway because you know you have it documented and you can refer to your good checklist or your templates that you create. And the best part is, once you have them figured out, they're documentable, shareable, and repeatable so that they help you deliver the same results over and over again. And getting organized means evaluating what the systems are behind what you do each day. If you're successful at what you do and you want to be consistent in delivering that same quality work product time and time again, I guarantee that you already have a system for doing it. And if you're struggling with various aspects of your work, then that might be a clue that you need a better system. So whether you realize it or not, you probably already have some systems in place for things like meeting and event planning, maybe travel planning. What I'm going to encourage you to do today is to get them documented for your benefit and for the benefit of others. And in doing that, you're also going to be able to improve your systems as you go. Because a lot of times what happens is we keep these things all in our head, and so sometimes we find ourselves spinning our wheels on various aspects of getting something done because we can't always remember how we did it the last time where we do rework trying to navigate through, okay, did I do it like that? No, I did it like this. No, it should look, look like that. I can't remember exactly how I did that. When you have a documented system and the procedures that help you figure out how to get that system completed, you can refer to the, the documentation, to your procedure, to your form or your checklist, and it helps you quickly figure out what you need to do so you're not wasting all of that time trying to recall, how did I do this the last time? And if you don't really feel like you have any good systems in place, then today is the perfect starting point for helping you get some figured out. Because these systems will be the underpinning of your success in getting and staying organized as an administrative professional. So if you think about it, you probably already have some systems in place like I mentioned. How many of you have some procedures documented for how you do various aspects of your job? Maybe some forms, templates, and checklists to help you remember what you do or what you need to do? Do you have a morning or afternoon routine that you repeat daily, weekly, maybe monthly? How about a set method for how you do various aspects of your work? Ultimately, your current systems are how you're getting things done today. There's a system behind each of these. Now, it may not be as consistent yet because it's not documented or repeatable by others, but, but we'll get there. And you may wonder what's the difference between a system and a procedure, because sometimes I use them interchangeably, but there is a, a, a delineation that's important to note here. Think of procedures as the individual gears that make up your overall system. So it's possible to have one procedure that might be your entire system in some cases. Very simple things. You can sometimes document the whole thing with just one procedure. But most systems are going to be made up of a series of procedures and some forms and templates and checklists to go along with it. And I'll show you an example here in just a moment. If you have started creating individual procedures for what you do, you probably already have the start to some of your systems captured. So we'll just keep building on that because that's a great starting point for where we're headed next. So here's a great example. This is our Admin Pro Training Series folder, or the system for how we do our monthly professional development webinars online. This is a, a monthly training subscription that we offer at allthingsadmin.com. And we have a very specific procedure for how we get each monthly webinar set up. There are specific things that we do in interacting with our guest speakers, in setting the webinars up, in recording the webinars, and in publishing and producing the webinars on our website. So it contains multiple procedures and templates that we use for all of the various aspects of running the event. And they're all organized visually using file naming conventions and folders in one of our team's shared folders here. So you can see all of the procedures start with procedure. There's four of them here. 
all of the templates then start with template and then we try to be as succinct and specific as we can be in our file names so that things show up alphabetically and make sense to all of us who are using these day in and day out. So this is a great example of a documented system for how we run our Admin Pro training series and all of the specific procedures, forms, and templates that go into producing that month by month. Our systems and procedures are where we start then with defeating overwhelm. So to defeat overwhelm, you have to start by getting all of the clutter floating around in your head, out of your head, and onto paper. So this becomes the start of your procedures. Once you do that for a few days, then you start grouping like items together in your system. Let's say for event and meeting planning or travel planning or time and task management, maybe project management. And we can begin applying those four principles of organization here by gathering, containing, labeling, and creating a home, whether it's in print or online for our documented systems for each of these areas. Then you prioritize the big projects on your plate, and then you put your plan of action together for tackling them. And that's gonna mean making a decision about whether you do it right now, you delay it, you delegate it, or you maybe need to delete it from your list entirely. Not everything on our to-do list should be there in the first place, and some of our overwhelm is actually self-inflicted. So we need to figure out what stays and what gets tossed. And documented procedures then make it possible for you to enlist the support of others in your day-to-day -day work when necessary. That's nice because sometimes we get things dumped on us and we wanna be able to say yes or we need to say yes, but it is physically impossible for us to get all of these other things done that are also on our priority list. So this gives you the opportunity then to be able to work with your executive in figuring out, okay, how do I take what I have here and prioritize my to-do list, and then who else can I enlist to help me with this, and then pass along the documented system or procedures that go with that system to allow them to be able to help you successfully in that process. And when we think about and document our system for time and task management, this allows us to set better boundaries about what we take on or how we get help in prioritizing the needs of the day when we're meeting with our executives and we're working through the urgent matters that sometimes pop onto the radar that weren't there the day before, let alone maybe sometimes the, uh, the hour before when you were actually meeting with your executive. And then having things documented isn't just for others who may be helping us when we're on vacation or we're out for a few days. It's actually so that we can stay better focused and not have to worry about remembering every last detail in the midst of all of the interruptions and distractions that we face in our normal course of work. And documented systems and procedures help you maintain focus and get back into the flow of staying focused after those interruptions and distractions have caused you to have to pause, take a break, and then come back to something. And ultimately what these do is help you consistently deliver the same quality work product time and time again. And the more focused you can be in getting through a task, the, the more successful you're going to be at consistently delivering that high quality work product. So what types of office systems then do you need? Well, there are five that I like to get started with. For most offices, I start with what I refer to as the five core administrative systems. There are certainly going to be others that you need in addition to these, but these are the most common ones that I start with with most assistants. And they are time and task management. And that means writing down and thinking through how do you capture new requests? How do they come into your system? Once a new task comes to you, whether it's verbally or by email, how do you get it into a system then for follow-up? So for me, for example, I use a portable journal if I'm out and about and taking notes without my laptop nearby, or if I'm at my desk, I pull up my computer and I use either Outlook Tasks or my Teamwork Project Management Tool. And I actually prefer putting things directly into my Teamwork Project Management Tool, but depending on what it is and who I'm working with, sometimes I do use Outlook Tasks for a few things. Then, once it's in that tool, I can keep track of where I'm at in the process of completing it. I can follow up and give reports to my executive or to my clients I'm working with on where we're at in the process of working through that particular item. 
I can check it off when it's complete. So I can tell you when it was completed and by whom. And then I can also give you a report of the timeline that went into uh, seeing a project through from start to finish. And at any given point in there, I can always get a new item added in and prioritized because I have this system in place. I have the teamwork project management tool and my Outlook tasks, and that is my system for time and task management. Filing, both paper and digital. This is a huge one, and a lot of times we think we have to have separate systems for paper and digital, when really, if you create a good one, they can mirror one another so that it makes sense where you go to look for something in your paper files and then where you have digital files stored and saved online that reflect similar filing conventions. Travel planning is a big one. Not every assistant does this, but sometimes this is one that somebody may need to substitute out a different one that's more applicable for their job description or their work. Event and meeting planning, whether it's planning meetings for two individuals or 2,500 individuals, you need a system for it. And project management, even if you aren't specifically managing projects, but you are helping support them, you need to have a good system in place for how that works and flows through your, through and across your desk as an administrative professional. Some of the other ones that may be applicable for you, depending on your roles and responsibilities, are a, a contact and client management system, documenting how you handle accounting and finance related items, maybe disaster recovery, human resources or payroll, and you can certainly fill in the blank with what's applicable for your specific job in the organization that you work for. But once you kind of have this list identified, first of all, things that you know you already kind of have in place, but you maybe just need to fine tune a little bit or get documented, or other things that you know that if you really want to be more efficient, you need a better system for this particular aspect of your work. Start by making that list of what you know you have and then what you need to create or improve upon. And then we look at how do you create an effective system for each of those areas of your work. I created a five steps to mapping out your office systems process. And this is what I do when I go through the process of mapping out an office system. It's really pretty simple. It's not, it's not a hard process, but I'm going to show you an actual example to kind of visually illustrate this so you can see what we're talking about. But let's go through the five steps first. Step one is to brainstorm. And I like to say think brain dump here. This is where you write down how you're currently doing things step by step as much as you possibly can. And this is that first step in overcoming and combating overwhelm. You've got to get it out of your head so that it quits rolling around up there endlessly without any direction on how to do it and your priorities keep flipping around on you because you're not as clear about what needs to happen and when. So think brain dump and just get as much out of your head and onto paper as you possibly can. And if you're thinking about one system in particular, it's more helpful in this particular case to focus on one system at a time and do your brain dump on that. So let's, for our example today, we're going to look at board meeting um, coordination. Step two then is batching. And this is one of those areas where once you've done the brain dump, then you need to think in terms of how do I batch these things into logical breaks? So some procedures for my team are anywhere from the system itself may be 10 or 12 pages long. There may be three or four different procedures that go into that. So in order, when we first do that brain dump, it may be this great big, huge, long list of bulleted items that are part of how we get it done. But then we need to make it easy to understand and easy to accomplish. And it makes sense to break it into logical chunks. And that's what we do with step two. Step three then, make it visual whether that's color coding, bolding, italicizing, drawing lines and boxes, things that you want to pop off the page, whether it's a digital document you're formatting or it's handwritten notes that you're quickly capturing, make it visual so it's easy to identify. You do this first, second, third, or it's important to do this or to think through this first. And that's part of also with this making it easy to read, use numbers for ordered lists or specific things that need to be done in a specific order. Use bullets for informational things. So with systems and procedures, one of the things I encourage you to not get hung up on is using complete sentences and making this like the most 
formally written research paper you've ever crafted in your career. That's not what this is about. This is about getting information out of your head and onto paper in enough detail that somebody else can do it from start to finish or so that you can follow it again from start to finish, but it needs to be scannable and quick and easy to read. Otherwise, people aren't going to use it or they'll skip over important sections. So even if something could technically be written in a paragraph form, you probably still want to use bullets for that information just because it makes it easy to quickly scan and you're making sure that the important stuff is still getting read. Step five then is to test it out and continue to update it as you test and use it and give those who help cover for you or who are helping offload some of the, the work that you sometimes maybe need to share with others in order to meet big project deadlines, give them permission to help you update it as well. Because sometimes when we're putting these things together, we make logical jumps because we know how to do it and we forget to document the little details that are still important for someone else to maybe know who isn't used to doing it. So continue to update these as you test and use them. That's how you make your systems as complete as you possibly can and create solid and effective procedures that can be used over and over again by anybody who needs them. So the best way to explain how to document your systems on paper is for me to show you. And we're going to use meeting and event planning as our example and focus specifically on creating a system for planning quarterly board meetings. When you're planning a board of directors meeting, what do you do and in what order? So what I've included here on this slide is a brain dump of all of the things that go into putting a board meeting together. I've done this for years and years and I still have one client that I support for his, I think six or seven boards that he's on now. And so this is a list. In this particular case, I actually have it in the correct order because it was easier for sharing, showing with you on a webinar. But in most cases, I just start with a brain dump, any random order. And then once I've done that brain dump, I do the batching. So what are the logical breaks in the process? And in this particular case, the first thing we have to figure out is the date selection. Then we look at putting the meeting agenda and the uh, inviting the attendees and handling that in combination. Then we look at conference room logistics. We potentially plan a board dinner depending on the time of year. We look at travel planning for our various board directors, the meeting catering needs, and then assembly of the board materials. So these are the batches or the logical breaks in the process that help make this a more manageable system as we create it. Then we find ways to make it visual. So in this particular case, I numbered things one through 18 so that we could keep track of them from example to example. When you're doing this in your own version, it may make sense to restart the numbering under each section. But for our purposes today, I just numbered it 1 through 18 so we can keep track of the same data from slide to slide. So you can color code, you can highlight, you can draw lines and boxes around things. And ultimately, for board meeting planning, until the date selection is done and we've got everybody aligned with and confirmed for a specific date, none of the rest of this really makes that much difference. The next two important things then are the meeting agenda and the attendees and the conference room logistics. And then these other things can be handled as we get to them closer to the event. Making it easy to read. Again, numbering things that have to be done in a certain order, using bullets for informational things, and then testing it out or updating it as we use it. Now, the other component of this, once you've kind of done this brain dump and you've put your sections together, there's a couple of other things that you can do here. And you can do this as you go if that's easier for you, or you can come back and do it kind of after you've done your brain dump and created your sections and you're trying to look at, okay, now what are the procedures that I need for each batch or each phase of this system? So depending on how complex or simple your system is, you may want to identify the procedures, forms, templates, or checklists that are needed as you go through each of the steps that we've outlined, or I may document the system at that high level overview first and then come back and go through this process secondarily. Either way, we break it into segments or phases and then we identify which procedures are needed for each phase. So in the second step of creating a system, I encourage you to think about it in terms of batches. 
And these batches create the segments or phases of the system where you can supplement even further with forms, templates, checklists, and more detailed procedures. So using our board meeting planning example, these are the batches or segments. And in our first grouping here, we had date selection. And for the date selection, I have an email template for initiating the process that I use that I send to all of the board directors and some of the uh, regular guests that attend. And then I have a specific procedure explaining the nuances of board scheduling and working with other board members' assistants for selecting the date. The next area then is meeting agenda and attendees. Again, I have a meeting agenda template. I have a meeting email, a meeting invite email template that we use, and then a procedure explaining how to determine the agenda items and who the additional participants may be in addition to our regular guests and our board directors specifically. And then for the conference room logistics, it's just a simple procedure for how we determine which conference rooms we're going to use or if we need to make reservations with an external vendor or how that how that works or how we make that decision. The next aspect of our process was board dinner planning, travel planning. So there's a board dinner planning form that I had created to make sure I go through with my executive or the board chair and ask all of the pertinent questions about what their preferences are for the board dinner, if we're gonna have one for that particular meeting. And then a procedure explaining how the scheduling process works for that. The travel planning. I have a travel profile for each of the board directors. I have a travel planning form for arranging their travel. And I have an itinerary template that I use then once the travel plans are made that I send to them with their final details. And a procedure explaining the nuances of board travel planning. And finally, meeting catering and board books. So there's a catering order form that I used when I was doing internal catering with our, our corporate on-site vendor. There were also external groups that I used that I had specific notes about, and so all of that was captured on my catering order form, and a procedure explaining the catering preferences of various board members and or of my board chair. And finally, the board books. We had a board book PowerPoint template, and then a procedure explaining how the board assembly, the board packet assembly and distribution process for each meeting worked. So you can see we had our categories or our phases, but each one of them had some specific forms, templates, checklists, or specific procedures explaining how to do that aspect of it. And this is how we have a full system of procedures, forms, templates, and checklists that comes together to create the overall system for planning a board meeting. Now, what I'm sharing with you today is a very quick, fast and furious example of getting started with developing your systems. If you need more help beyond what I share with you today, I encourage you to check out my third book, Become a Procedures Pro. It specifically addresses the example I've shared with you here, but it goes into even more detail. And it also gives you my five-step process for creating effective office procedures. So if you want help creating good procedures to support Support your systems. My five steps, five simple steps for doing that are outlined in the book. I also talk about how to create good forms, templates, and checklists. Uh, there's a section on disaster planning and recovery. And we look at how procedures not just benefit your company and your team, but also you and your career as an administrative professional. In addition, if you need more help with how to map out effective systems for specific aspects of your job, then my second book, The Organized Admin, is the one I recommend for that. And it specifically addresses creating systems for organizing your ideas, your workspace, paper and digital files, time and tasks, your inbox, meetings and events, travel planning, projects, and your career as a whole. And we have a wealth of resources and free templates and ideas and things to help you get started at both of the book websites at theorganizedadmin.com and ProcediuresPro.com. And if you go to the site and click on the resources link on either site, you'll be taking, taken to these pages, and you can access the resources by type or by chapter that, as they fall in the book. So even if you don't have the books, you can still go and access all of the free resources on both of the book sites. 
But then be sure to look at all of the, the links and the photos. We've got different examples of what we use in our office and samples that we share with you on both of these sites. And if you haven't already, I invite you to join the All Things Admin Online Training Center. It's absolutely free, and you'll automatically receive access to the zip file packages that include all of the templates that I share in all three of my books when you activate your free membership there. And you can learn more about that at allthingsadmin.com. That's also where we give you two of our most popular and also free templates for helping you get your procedures development started. One is the Excel file on the left, and it's designed to help you track your tasks as you're getting started so that you can document what are the things you're doing daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually that need to get captured and organized for, your, for you, but also for others who may need to help you or fill in for you on vacation or uh, leaves of absence. And then the other is a procedures template so that you can quickly start writing your procedures down or capturing them digitally. And if you make this part of your daily routine, and I explain how to do this in my book, Become a Procedures Pro, these templates are designed to help you do that. And then once you become a member of our online training center, there's also lots of other um, resources, both free and paid, that you can access there as well. And some of those tools for systems and procedures development specifically include our five-day challenge, which is one of our most popular online challenges, the template for creating your administrative procedures toolkit, both the template package itself in a zip file, or we also have the OneNote notebook template now as well. And we have a four-part in-depth course, Kickstart Creating Your Administrative Procedures Binder. And you can learn more about those on our website. So once you've identified where you need better habits and simple systems, you have to invest time in creating those systems and finding the tools that work the most optimally for you. When you get them created and tested and you know they work for you, then you have to use them religiously. That's how you learn to trust your systems and that's how your executives and your teams know that you have a bulletproof process in place that they can trust each and every time as well. Just remember that you have to put the effort into changing your habits and implementing those systems that will help you get organized. And trust me, it takes time and a little bit of trial and error sometimes to get it figured out, but it is worth the effort. You also have to remain open to modifying your systems when situations change or your responsibilities shift, or maybe you find yourself facing a new organizational challenge. So let's say maybe you got promoted and some new responsibilities were given to you. This may require learning how to manage larger projects with more complexity. It may mean you have to find a new or a varied approach to doing things successfully in this new area of responsibility. And that may mean altering your system. It doesn't mean you have to pitch the system out entirely, but you're gonna to need to figure out where you need to tweak it or adjust it. Or in some cases, it may mean you need to start from scratch. But staying aware of those things can help you be prepared for them when they happen so that you know, hey, this is part of the process. This isn't a, a road bump that is not overcomable. And if your company goes through a merger or an acquisition, sometimes entire cultures shift that may force you to work differently than you did previously. If you can go through you know, various culture things and get by without having to change anything, it's probably a miracle. The other thing for me that has been hugely important in the last five years of my uh, professional life especially has been several of the significant personal transitions that I myself and my family have gone through. And that can shift your priorities and the way that you work going forward as well. So staying aware of these things and being prepared for the changes as they come will help you be able to navigate them more successfully. These types of situations all require careful review of your existing systems and identifying what you need to adjust to ensure continued success in staying organized for the long haul. So here's your plan of action to get the ball rolling on your systems and procedures development with today's very quick and fast admin chat. We don't want you to feel more overwhelmed than you probably already do. So we're only, I only want you focusing on one system at a time. I want you to identify where you need to create or improve a system. I want you to brainstorm or write down what it looks like today or brainstorm ideally what you would like it to look like. And then test it, fine tune it, 
and implement it. And once you've done that, then repeat this process and pick your next system. When I'm helping assistants get started on their procedures documentation that goes along with their systems, I always say never work on more than five procedures at a time. That's one procedure each day over the course of a work week, and that keeps it more manageable. And since a series of procedures go into a system, that's why I say don't work on more than one system at a time. And if you can get it done faster than a week, great. If it takes you a week, maybe two weeks to get it figured out, don't worry about it. Just keep working through it. And if you need help, brainstorm with a friend or, a, or another administrative professional, or drop me an email at our website at allthingsadmin.com. You can contact me at any time through the Contact Us page. And if you get stuck, let me help you get unstuck. We'll help you get it figured out. Because sometimes just talking through something with another person can help you quickly figure out the best path for getting it done, or maybe somebody else has a better system already figured out for it that they can help you improve your system as a result. So be willing to collaborate and brainstorm with someone else and continue testing it. And as you're using it and it feels like it's working great, fine. But if it doesn't feel like it's working as well as you want it to, then keep working through it and keep tweaking it and making adjustments to it as you use it over time. And you'll get it to where you want it eventually. Studies show that getting organized can literally help you breathe easier during your workday, lower your stress, and contribute to better health. And I know for a fact, systems help you save time, money, and resources. And they can also help you improve your personal productivity and efficiency. And that's why systems are at the heart of success for every professional. If you want to love your job and love your life, effective systems will enhance every aspect of both. I look forward to helping you overcome overwhelm by developing your administrative systems and procedures. You can find lots of free articles and resources at allthingsadmin.com on our blog, and I encourage you to join our online training center where you can access a lot of the free resources that I shared with you today. I wish you every success in overcoming overwhelm with great systems and procedures for your team.